is there anything that could poke me in here? <laughs> And it was, you know, this. Yeah? Yeah, stick your hand in there. It's a gauntlet of, you know, finger fillets. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 37 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and this is a podcast primarily about knitting, though we do get up to other fiber-related topics from time to time. I'm coming to you, as always, from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the southwestern United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our nearly four-year-old son, Angus, our 10-month-old son, Ronan, and our big fat house cat, Austin. Happy New Year to all of you, new and returning. Episode 37, the year 2019. This is crazy. I am coming up on my two-year podiversary, I guess you could say, which is really exciting. That happens in February. But anyway, Happy New Year, and thank you. If you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming back time and time again each time I upload something new here on the channel. And if you are a new viewer and subscriber, welcome. Thank you for stopping by to check out my little corner of YouTube. Before I jump in, into anything, I want to let you guys know that the beginning of these podcasts tend to be rather lengthy with administrative details and various different goings on with knit alongs and what have you. So if you'd like to skip right past that, you can definitely do that down below in the description box are timestamps. You can click on the segment that you're looking for and it will take you right to that segment if you choose not to watch all of the administrative stuff going on in the beginning. However, if you are new to the channel, if you are new to the podcast, I encourage you to watch because it will keep you in informed of what's going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. The email for the podcast is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with me via snail mail now. You can find a P.O. box associated with the podcast in the about section of the channel. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast. You can find that by going to Ravelry, clicking on the groups tab, and typing in Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast. Join the group over there. Get involved. There are lots of things going on for 2019. You can join some of the knit-alongs that we have going on now and that are coming up. Lots of fun things going on, so definitely get involved in that little community as well. In regards to social media, I am most active on Instagram. You can find me in two different places on Instagram. I have an account linked to knitting and the podcast, and I have an account linked to Fiber for the People, my hand-dyed yarn company. All of my knitting and podcasts and some of my life-related stuff is over at Wool Needles Hands, and everything Fiber for the People related is at fiber.for.the.people. And also, if you'd like to learn more about Fiber for the People, you can check out the online shop at fiberforthepeople.com. Com. Lots of information over there. It's a very well put together website. I'd like to say I'm pretty proud of the way it looks right now. So definitely head over, check it out there, see what kinds of things are going on. And be sure to scroll all the way down to the bottom and sign up for the newsletter. That way you can stay in the loop of all things fiber for the people. You can stay updated on when new subscription clubs will be coming out, various different things like that. It's a really good thing to do if you would like to keep posted on fiber for the people content. In further fiber for the people news, there is a shop update coming this Saturday. Saturday, it is actually mainly a Lucky Strike and mini fiber bundle update. I'm going to be providing some mini bundles and also some really beautiful one-of-a-kind Lucky Strikes. If you're not sure what Lucky Strikes are, definitely head over to the website, scroll down a little ways, and there's an entire article regarding what Lucky Strikes are and how they are created. It's pretty interesting. I do plan on shooting a vlog series on how I create my Lucky Strikes, so that will be there as well. But in the meantime, if you're curious, definitely check out that article over on the shop. In addition to the Lucky strikes and the mini fiber bundles, I will be featuring one new colorway and I have had my socks knocked off with the reception of this colorway over on Instagram. It's completely blown my mind. It is a new colorway called Kick Drum. I'll go ahead and show it here. I'll pop it up right over here so you can see what it looks like. It's beautiful and I'm very, very proud of it, but I had no idea exactly how enthusiastic folks were going to be around this colorway, but it turns out to be um, a winner. So I'm excited to be bringing that to the shop and see uh, where that goes. I have had several sweater quantity orders for this colorway already, which if you're not aware, that is an option in the shop at any time. Any of my regular colorways, um, it, pretty much any colorway that I offer with the exception of Lucky Strikes and one of a kind colorways can be ordered as a die to order purchase with a three skein minimum. So that kind of thing is going on right now for the kick drum colorway. Um, yeah, really exciting. So that is going to be coming to the shop on Saturday. So 
Saturday, this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. There are still some really beautiful skeins of yarn that are in the shop from last Saturday's update. And if you have been paying attention to the channel, you probably may have noticed a separate Yarn Sexies video was recently uploaded. I'll go ahead and link to that right over here. You can click on that and watch it. It's really short. It's like little over two minutes long, but it shows you what was put into the shop for last Saturday's shop update. And very little remains of those um, colorways, but there are some left in the shop, so definitely check that out um, in the meantime. Also recently uploaded on the channel was the most recent vlog series in the total series that I've been doing, chronicling my process for coming up with the colorways for the Fiber for the People Color Fest Sock Set Club. I did three mini series um, over th the course of the last six months covering my process for coming up with three different exclusive colorways for that club. That particular club has closed. Um, it's actually the club is completely over. I released my newest club, A Bird in the Hand, which has also closed. The listings for that closed on January 1st, but there will be another sock set club and I think it's going to be a sock set club unless I decide to change it up and make it just a simple yarn club, but there will be another club coming in May. So if you're interested in joining a Fiber for the People subscription club keep posted um, sign up for that newsletter it's the best way to keep posted but kind of keep an eye out in May that is when I'm going to be releasing the following subscription club whatever it may be but yeah definitely don't forget to check out the vlog series it is the most recent one I've just recently uploaded it uh, about a, five days ago it follows my process for designing the carnivale inspired colorway it's a lot of fun so definitely check it out I'll go ahead and link to the playlist right up here you can click on that and watch it later another really quick announcement for the Fiber for the People shop, as well as my Ravelry shop here, my um, original knitting pattern designs. I have released a second knitting pattern. This is my only my second knitting pattern. I really, actually, it might be my third. Yeah, it's my third that I've released to Ravelry, and I'm really, really excited about that. It is the cocktail socks. I have them here to show you guys. I'll pop up a picture as well, but the cocktail socks are a really fun, simple DK weight ankle sock that could be worn at a cocktail party if you have to take your shoes off and they still are kind of elegant and nice and cozy at the same time. So they are the cocktail socks. So here they are. I did not knit these. These were actually knit for me by my best friend, Lauren. She's a wonderful knitter. I asked if she could just whip a pair up for me so I could use them as my sample and they're gorgeous. They are knit in the espresso roast colorway by Fiber for the People, which is a blue face luster DK weight yarn and they're gorgeous. So here are the cocktail socks. Many of you who've been watching the podcast may remember these socks from last year. That's when I started designing them and had test knitters test them. Well, I finally got around to getting everything finalized and finished and here they are and you guys, they are so gorgeous. I have not worn these um, a whole ton just because I had Lauren knit them for me for the purpose of using them as a sample for photographs, but I told her she could have them back. So these are definitely gonna be going back to Lauren, but um, I love them, they're beautiful. So this is the cocktail sock. Um, or cocktail socks and the pattern is available uh, for download through Fiber for the People's online shop. You can also find it on Ravelry. Um, so yeah, definitely get you some of this. I don't have any more of the BFL DK Way yarn, which is what these are knit out of in the shop right now, but there is more coming, of course, but any DK weight yarn will do. It's a really fun knit, super fast, super satisfying. You're probably gonna find yourself wanting to knit a few different pairs of these to have, but just wanted to let you know that that pattern is finally available. You can find it right now. All right, let's get right into it. I want to talk to you guys about what's going on in the knit alongs over here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. I want to start with the Year of Hats Cal 2018. So we just launched the Year of Hats Knit Along 2019 as a follow-up to the 2018 version that we did. Lots of information about that over on the Ravelry group, so definitely check that out. But I need to announce the winner for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018, the December winner, and then the entire knit along winner. So I'm giving out um, a month monthly prizes were given out for 2018. I have to give the prize out to December's winner and then I also have to announce the winner for the entire knit along. Now the winner for the whole knit along had to participate each month. So it has to be a person who was uh, 
fully participating in the knit along and they did all 12 months of knit hats. So that is where I'm pulling um, the winner for the entire knit along. However, the December winner just has to submit a project for December and the same rules apply for the 2019 knit along as well. And I'll talk about more of that in just a moment. The December finished object thread was so chocked full of beautiful color work hats. You guys really blew my mind with this one. So many cool patterns that I hadn't, that I didn't know about before. And I'm really happy that I do now. In fact, the winner uh, for the December month of the year of Hats Cal 2018, it chose a pattern that I had never heard of. And I definitely plan to knit it because it is absolutely so beautiful. So without further ado, let's go ahead and announce the winner for December. The winner for December is Jen. And you guys, I'm not really sure how to say her Ravelry handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop it up right over here. Jen at this Ravelry handle has won. She knit the, and I'm, I'm hoping to be pronouncing this correctly. It is the Cusquenia hat by Kristen Jan Cook. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing any of that correctly, but that is the name of the pattern. It is the Cusquenia. Jen, thank you so much for participating in December. This hat is gorgeous. Your color choices are beautiful. I'm really excited to say that you are the winner of the knit along for December and her prize. I decided I didn't know what to put as a prize for December. I just hadn't um, picked anything. Uh, so I kind of at last minute decided on what to send and I chose a brand new colorway in the shop by Fiber for the People that I'm super excited about and I have it here on my Merino bulky base which I'm also incredibly excited about and it's the perfect base to knit a hat. It's just enough yarn to knit a hat and then some um, really pretty. So this is the Talaki Pocky colorway. It's gorgeous. It's a really beautiful kind of blending of teals and like aqua turquoise colors with really pretty gold and tobacco speckles in there and some deep deep blue speckles as well it's gorgeous i'm obsessed with this colorway is in the in the pan i knew i was gonna love it so much so this is called talaki Paki, and it will be the prize for december so jen you will be receiving this skein as your prize and actually if, if, at the time that i'm recording this there are three skeins of this left in the shop it went pretty quickly but there are three skeins left if you're interested the colorway is talaki Paki, and this is the merino bulky base and it's really something special it's super squishy, super lovely, a really beautiful yarn. All those different shades of blue and green in there. Oh, it's just really gorgeous. So there is that. So this will be for the winner of December. So Jen, definitely get in touch with me. Let me know that you saw this and I can get this in the mail and out to you right away. Now let's go ahead and talk about the 2018 year of hats cow wrap up and the winner for the entire knit along. Now, I have some information here that was provided to me by Steffi, who is my Pinterest moderator, which I forgot to mention in the beginning of the show that the podcast has a Pinterest page and the Pinterest page is moderated by Steffi, who is at Hootie09 on Instagram and Hootie Knits here on Ravelry. And, and that's a crime not to have mentioned her because she is invaluable, wonderful. She does so much more than just moderate the Pinterest page. For example, she came up with a little list of statistics for the year of Hats Cal 2018. And I wanna share some of that with you guys. And then I wanna go ahead and announce the winner for the entire knit along. So she compiled here um, kind of just a list of all of the different projects for each of the different months and then the total number of projects, which ones were crocheted and which ones were knit. And I'm not going to read the entire list. I'm actually going to put this up on Ravel Ravelry for you to look at, but I am going to tell you that there were a total of 787 projects knit for this knit along in the year 2018. 747 of them were knit and 40 of them were crochet. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine folks were able to participate every single month, which is really exciting. Um, but we had lots of participants on each of the months. And like I had mentioned, and this is the same going forward with the 2019 knit along. Um, if you can't participate every month, that's totally fine. The only thing is, is that it doesn't allow you to be entered into the final prize for the knit along. Um, that's only for folks that were able to participate all 12 months. But otherwise, um, definitely join in because you can win monthly prizes, which I'm going to talk about that in just a moment 
moment because if you remember on the previous episode, I mentioned that I will not be giving out monthly prizes. Well, I've changed that. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so the participants that were um, active every single month, we had, and this is just their Ravelry handles, we had Erica League, Crystal Rain, Trace44, Laura P. Rogers, So Run Knit, Marg, uh, Marge Key, or Marg Key, M A R G K I, Pinky Pink 62, Sexy Legs, and Carlene Page. So, those of you that I just mentioned, thank you so much for participating in all 12 months. That is a huge endeavor, and I think that's awesome. And just thank you. That's really great. I chose randomly um, from that list and it generated the uh, name for me. I just added all of the names to a list and had it choose a name randomly. And the winner was Carlene Page. So Carlene Page, you are the winner of the entire Wool Needles Hands 2018 um, Year of Hats Knit Along. Congratulations. And you know, one thing that I thought was really cool was that when Carlene would show her um, finished objects, she would create little collages of her projects and it was just really well thought out um, and, and it, so I think that's awesome. So Carlene, congratulations. Now let's talk about the prize that Carlene uh, has won. So the final prize for the knit along is really cool. I was actually, when I was um, collecting prizes at the beginning of the year, um, donations from you guys, viewers, uh, whoever, for the purpose of this knit along, Diane Service got in touch with me and she is a fantastic knit hat designer and she wanted to donate a copy, two copies, one for me to keep and then one to use as a prize of her book, Knitted Beanies and Slouchy Hats. And this is it right here. And it's a fantastic book. Tons of really awesome hat patterns in here. I've obviously gone through the book um, because I have it in my library now and every single pattern is fantastic. I love it. It's a really great resource and the hats look like they're a lot of fun to knit. Um, some chunky and slouchy ones, some worsted weight hats, just a really great variety of hats. So this is going to be going to the winner as well as this gorgeous project bag by Trisha, who is Joy in the Stitches. She sells project bags on Etsy. And you guys, I've said this before about her project bags. They are some of my favorites. They're gorgeous. They're very well made. Um, fantastic construction. The insides are always a lot of fun too. So this will also be going as the prize for the entire knit along. So I'm super excited about that. Congratulations, Carlene. Please get in touch with me to let me know that you saw this so I can get this in the mail and out to you right away. And everybody who participated in the 2018 Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal, thank you so much. I really hope that you come back to participate in 2019. We're in the middle of January and we're already going so you can join in anytime. Jump in, the water is great, but it was a lot of fun. So I'm super excited about the upcoming knit along. Okay, quick news about the 2019 Year of Hats Knit Along. I had mentioned on the previous episode that I was not going to be giving out monthly prizes for this knit along, but I have decided to um, to do that, to actually give monthly prizes. I feel like it's a really cool incentive. It makes it a lot of fun for people to have something to look forward to. And I, I get it. I think it's, it's cool to do monthly prizes. Another reason why I think it's a cool thing to do is because it allows me to share with you guys some of the really awesome makers that are out in our community right now. So I think that that's a good reason to do it as well. So what I want to do is I'm just want to throw out there to those of you uh, makers, designers, to ask for submissions for prize donations to the podcast. Now it can be in the form of a pattern. Um, I actually was thinking uh, Steffi and I, who is my Pinterest moderator, but she's so much more than that. Steffi, you're wonderful. We were discussing this and we're thinking that hat patterns, if you are a hat designer and you would like to submit or donate a hat pattern to the podcast for a, a particular month, or it doesn't really matter, just any month, you can choose your month if you'd like then that could be the prize for each of the months. And I, I, but I would be completely open to anything you would like to donate. If you are a yarn dyer, a project bag maker, what have you, anything that you think would be a fun donation for a prize for the knit along, let me know because I am going to be accepting prize donations for this knit along as well. Um, I just think it's a lot of fun and I know that you guys looked forward to it as well. So I'm just throwing that out there. I don't have a prize selected for January yet. That is in the works, but I will let you know. 
Um, the next podcast episode will be uploaded the middle of February. So I'll announce the winner and the prize at that time. Um, but right now I don't have it. If I do end up finding a prize, keep posting on Ravelry. I'm going to make sure that I keep you guys updated in between podcast episodes. I'm over there on Ravelry. So you can definitely check it out over there. But in the meantime, if you would like to donate something to the podcast to use as a prize so that I can not only um, offer it as a prize, but give it a little review here on the podcast, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to the folks that watch the show and participate in the knit along. Okay, at the beginning of the month, we also wrapped up the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along 2018. This is where we knit or crocheted garlands uh, for any purpose, really. So I want to go ahead and take a minute and announce the winner of that knit along. All right, the winner of the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along is Ninja Ema. She crocheted a very long flag garland for a library yarn bombing, which I think is really cool. I'll pop some pictures up right here so you can check it out. Ninja Ema, definitely get in touch with me. I have a prize for you. For the Garland Along winner, I'm sending out lots of really yummy yarn from two different yarn dyers. I have By the Bay Yarn Co. So this is a skein of yarn by By the Bay Yarn Co and it's beautiful. It is her um, lucky, so I call my um, one of a kind colorways that I create from leftover dye stock. I call them my lucky strikes. Like I said, there's more about that on the site. This is her version of that. This is called Under Things and it's on 100% Superwash Merino fingering single ply. Really beautiful. And I'm also going to be including by one to find fiber this excuse me one to five fiber this is a bunch of single ply minis they are iris and the babies 87 yards 20 grams fingering weight superwash merino really really beautiful colors so here are those little mini skeins look at how gorgeous they are oh stunning absolutely beautiful so these two little bundles of yarn here will be going to Ninja Ema. So definitely get in touch with me. Let me know that you saw this and I will get your prize out to you right away. And we meet again at the other end of a quite lengthy administrative section of the podcast. Like I said at the beginning though, you're always more than welcome to skip over that and get right to the meat of the podcast if you'd like. But anyhow, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Whatcha Drinkin' segment where I get a chance to kind of unwind after the administrative segment, which is always just a little bit stressful. I want to make sure I cover everything, but here we are. And I have with me my um, Aries mug, which was a gift to me from my best friend, Lauren, who was actually the person who knit those um, cocktail socks. I love this mug. It's really beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I am an Aries. My birthday is in April. It's coming up. The big three, five folks is coming in April. But anyway, here we are. Before we move on, I want to share with you guys something that my husband got me for Christmas and I think you're really going to like it. Okay. This is a, one of those Christmas presents that you're not expecting and you open it up and it just, ugh, it just warms your heart and makes you feel so great. It's just so cool. And I'm really proud to have this. This is a really cool print by an artist by the name of Irina Sophia. And she is on Etsy. It's irinasophia.etsy.com. And she is an artist and she creates prints of her sketches and her drawings. And I have one of them right here um, that I'm really excited to show you guys. I don't want it to have too much of a glare on it. I would take it out of this frame. Maybe I'll do that because I don't think that would be very difficult to do. Okay, so I slipped it out of the frame so I could show you guys, but it's really beautiful. Um, it's just a print that's been, you know, it's drawn and colored, and I'm not sure if it's digitally, no, it's obviously not digitally colored, but it's beautiful. So it is a woman, and she looks to be darning a knit sock, and she's wearing a superhero cape and a superhero mask. Like, how beautiful is this, you guys? So anyway, I wanted to share that with you guys so you could go check her out. She is, um, like I said, Irina Sophia. This is the postcard that came um, with the order here. Let me get my, there it is. So cool. And this is also one of her sketches as well. And it just, it's just a postcard on the back. But yeah, it's arenasophia.etsy.com. This is the print. And you guys, how cool is that? A superhero knitter adorable and what I really love about this is you can tell like so she's wearing like a shoe or a sock here but there's nothing over here so it's like she's darning the sock that she's supposed to be wearing I don't know who knows it's really cool 
So anyway, wanted to share that with you guys, but let's go ahead and move on to the finished object segment of the podcast. All right, you guys, things were getting a little toasty. I had to take off the sweater, but I feel much better now. So there you go. You know that the Veronica cardigan is definitely going to keep you warm. That's for sure. All right, you guys, I have two FOs that I would three FOs that I want to share with you guys today and one half object. Um, FO, if you're not sure, is a finished object and an HO, um, or as many people like to call it, a HO is a half object. Um, I have a couple of each for you guys today. So the first I want to do is my half object. These are my Silver Dream socks. And I'm, well, sock, I should say. This is just one. Don't get too excited. I haven't even cast it on to the second one. Um, but I'm really excited about this one. And these were supposed to be, if, you, if you've been watching the podcast for the last few episodes, these were supposed to be for my dad for Christmas. Well, we know that didn't work out, um, as it very rarely ever does when I say that I'm gonna knit my dad a pair of socks. I really need to work on that. Goals, you guys, goals. Here they are, Silver Dream, or here it is, the Silver Dreams sock. I haven't blocked it yet, and it's pretty chunky for my sock blocker, so it doesn't really stay on there nice and neat. Um, yeah, it's kind of slouchy but it's really beautiful, you guys. I'm really loving it. Um, the colors together are gorgeous. Real luxe, in my opinion. There's something about these colors together that just are super like woodsy, but kind of luxurious at the same time. This is knit in worsted weight yarn, or excuse me, DK weight yarn. This is fiber for the people yarn in English toffee. That's the orangish color where you're seeing here. Um, the green is fiber for the people in the green ochre colorway. And then this navy is Debbie, Debbie Bliss Cash Merino DK in, I think it's just a navy colorway. And ugh, I love this. I definitely would like to knit a hat um, in these colors as well. I'm going to show you another finished object in a minute, which is a, another color work hat. And I'm using a similar color palette to this. Like they could be in a similar collection. I'm just loving it. But yeah, these um, these are the Silver Dream socks. And I really, really, really liked knitting these. Um, and when I say that, I, I guess I mean, it's just pretty much a basic sock, but it's just this motif is really nice to knit. It looks really intricate, but it's not super complicated. It's a really nice color work knit. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. And I think it really translates nicely with these particular colors. I feel like it's such a bold motif that if you are going to knit this, you definitely want to make sure you're using colors that have stark contrast. So it really brings that out. But yeah, I love it. Real classic looking. But it's only half a pair, you guys, and I really need to pump out the other sock. And I I kind of want to just give myself the permission to say, um, give these to my dad next Christmas. Or, or if I'm better, I could say, give these to my dad for Father's Day, have the next sock knit by Father's Day, which is totally, it ought to be very doable. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm happy to have this one done. Uh, to kind of motivate me to get the other one done. They're going to be very cozy. I think they're going to be on the chunky side, not too big, but I think they're going to be slightly on the chunky side, even for my dad. Um, but that's, that's okay. I think they're, I think they're great. So that is my Silver Dream socks by Drops Design. I have these in my um, project notebook on Ravelry and I'm going to link to them down below if you're interested. But yeah, really, really great pattern. If you want a nice, simple, but um, color work sock, this is a really good one to go to. Definitely loving that. The pattern actually only calls for two colors, but it's a really easy design to throw a couple other color, to throw another color into that to add some um, kind of detail to it. So really cool. Love this pattern a lot. So Silver Dreams socks by Drops Design. Okay, I'm really excited about this next finished object because I designed this, you guys. And um, only two of the colorways are my own and that's okay, but I used some stash yarn and I'm loving this so much. I actually have two finished objects in this design that I'm gonna show you. One I have here physically, another one I'm gonna have to show you a picture because it was for my brother for Christmas, but this, um, I don't have a name for it yet. I just really love it. So this is a hat that I knit in December as part of the color work portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018, and it was for my son, Angus, and, ugh, it's so good, you guys. I really, really love it. <laughs> so here it is. 
Um, this, yeah, I don't have a name for this, you guys. I don't even know what to call it, but I really, really love it. He's worn it several times since I've made it, so it's a little on the, you know, ruffled side. But there it is. It's just a really fun... Um, I don't know, those of you that have a lot of experience doing color work hats, if this is just a simple design, but I had a ton of fun coming up with the design for this. And it wasn't one of those things that I sat down with a notebook and I sketched it out and I got really formal. It was just really me wanting to play around with color work and to get a nice woolly hat for my son because we were going to Dallas for New Year's and Dallas is super super cold this time of year, or at least it was when we were there while we were there it was crazy cold and I knew it was going to be and so I just wanted to whip up a nice warm woolly hat for my son that fit him because his other ones are now fitting Ronan um so yeah that was the whole purpose of this and I just started working you know little motifs into it and I'm really really happy with the way it came out so there, and then that, and then also the color. I love the color combination here. Um, so much so that I really want to, um, I have in if the Fiber for the People Solids collection, I have a really pretty navy like this called Going Out Jeans. The orange that you're seeing here in the gray are Fiber for the People. That's a uh, green ochre and English toffee like I have in my dad's uh, Silver Dream socks. But this oatmeal color is Lion Brand Wool, or excuse me, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the oatmeal colorway. And the navy is a Patton's Classic Worsted. Um, and I don't actually know what the navy color is called but they're just so beautiful together. I, there's something really, again, like kind of luxurious about the colors together. I love it. And the design, you guys, I'm so proud of it. Like look at the decreases. I kind of pulled some inspiration for these decreases from a couple other hats that I've worked on so far, but um, I, you know, I kind of improvised it. I'm sure I made some mistakes in there, uh, who knows, but love it. And then of course the multicolored pom-pom goes with it really well. Um, yeah, Angus has worn it several times. I'll pop in some pictures here so you can see them in it. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool pattern. So I have written this up. I do have the pattern. It's written up. I could definitely have it tested and published. It's a lot of fun to knit. Let me go ahead and show you the one that I made for my brother. So this one is knit in all Jameson and Smith um, Shetland wool, air and weight. Um, this was all yarn that I had in my stash as were uh, the last few things I've just showed you. But a lot of fun to knit this, especially in the air and weight. So this is the hat here. You can see that it is the same design. There are a few ch changes that I made to the crown. Um, I kind of made some adjustments on the way that I decreased the crown so that things lined up a little bit better than they do on this hat. Nothing that you would even really notice, but of course I wanted nice, you know, consistent, even um, stitch design in there if I wanted it to be a pattern that I would soon publish. So that's that. So that is the one that you see my brother wearing. It is an Aaron Waite hat and I do plan on making, and that is a true Aaron Waite up there. Jameson and Smith is, um, their Aaron Waite is thicker than kind of an average worsted weight yarn. It to me almost seems like a light bulky, which I guess that makes sense. But I plan on writing up the pattern for just a solid worsted weight yarn. So, and we'll, I'm going to have some various different sizes. So you can make one for a child and you can make one for an adult, um, lady or man. But I'm really excited about this. It was a lot of fun to design, a lot of fun to knit. And I think you guys will really like it. So I will, if I, when I get to the point where I need test knitters, I'll do a call on the Ravelry group and most likely on Instagram as well. So if you're interested, you can definitely keep posted there. Let let me know down below in the comments section if it is a design that you think would be fun to knit. Um, I really loved it. I'm really proud of it. Here it is again, just, you know, for the record. So yeah, really cool. Don't have a name for it yet. I'm still thinking about that. Suggestions are always welcome. <laughs> Now I know this next finished object you've seen on the previous episode of the podcast. I had my husband come on and he wore it for you, but that was pre-blocking and pre-pom-pom. So I'm just gonna really quick show it to you guys um, now that it has a pom-pom and it's kind of been well-loved since I made it for him. But this is the Cliff Park hat by Diana Walla and it's all finished. So again, you guys have seen this before if you have been watching the podcast, but here it is with its little pom-pom that I added. Um, because I love a really fun contrasting multicolor pom-pom. I just pulled the colors that I used for this little section of the hat and threw them together here for the pom-pom because I thought it kind of brought those colors out a little bit better. 
Um, but yeah, really, really love this hat. This is Jameson and Smith Shetland wool in the Erin uh, weight. And this is the same that I used to knit my own design for my brother. So it's the same weight of yarn. You can see um, that it's definitely, you know, a thicker worsted weight. It's not your typical worsted weight, I suppose. Um, really fantastic yarn. Shetland wool is just, it's... I've never knit with Letlopi yarn before or, you know, the Icelandic wool or anything like that, but I've heard that this is very similar in texture and um, the rustic nature of the yarn, but I love it. I think it has a really pretty halo as well. Just a really great yarn and especially fantastic for color work, so... That is that. So I just wanted to show that to you guys really quick so that you could see I did get a pom-pom on it. It is officially done and blocked and has been well loved. And I, to also tell you that if you want a new color work hat to knit, the Cliff Park hat is a fantastic option. <laughs> Okay, so I've been bitten by the vanilla sock bug again recently, and I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we were taking a plane trip. So like I mentioned, after Christmas we went to Dallas, and you may know, I think I've mentioned it previously, that I am, I've am i developed a fear of flying, and I really don't know where it came from. Um, I don't remember having this much of a discomfort about flying in my past. I think it's pretty recent. I almost want to say it's since I've had kids. And I know I've heard that, that once you have children, you kind of develop fears that you didn't have before. For me, I think it's flying. I get really, really nervous. And so I knew that we were going to be going on this flight and I didn't have any like new fun vanilla socks to work on. I had plenty, I could have just chosen some of them that I already had in the works, but I just wanted to start from scratch because the beginning of a vanilla sock when you're knitting it top down is actually the best part because you're just kind of knitting and you know, for a good enough amount of time that you don't have to worry too much about turning a heel or you know, decreasing a toe or what have you. So I decided to cast onto a pair of vanilla socks and that's what I did and I cast it on two at a time. So I'm not knitting them two at a time. I'm knitting them like at the same time. So I knit one and then I knit the next one and what have you. Cause I thought that I was going to knit them two at a time and I actually tried. And then I just realized the whole reason um, that I stopped knitting socks two at a time a while ago. And that's just because it's not as much fun. It's kind of an uncomfortable process for me. So I figured I'll just knit them together. They'll get done at close enough to the same time whatever. So that is what I have in the way of little knits that I'm working on right now. And I know this isn't part of my queue and maybe a little impulsive, um, but that's okay. I feel like as long as you keep, or not you, but me, this is about me. I'm not going to, you know, speak for anybody else, but as long as I keep myself mainly on course with only knitting from my queue every once in a while, you know, deviating and knitting up a pair of vanilla socks can't hurt me right? It's a new year, new things. What can you do? So I am knitting this in the Jamboree colorway by Fiber for the People. This is a colorway that I just recently um, released into the shop, which is completely tangled at the moment among the, when, okay, when you knit two socks at one time, but like not at the same time, like not on the same, it doesn't even matter. If you have two socks going in one project bag, it's a nightmare. They get tangled, you have a hot mess. And then when you have both of them on double pointed needles, stabbing you every which way, anytime that you you, you know, stick your hand in there. And I know I'm digressing, but when we were putting our bags through security at the airport, I had this uh, project bag, which is my um, fringe uh, field bag. It was attached to my diaper bag. And the, I always get pulled because when you have a diaper bag, if you have wipes in your diaper bag, they're always going to pull you for security. So I always get pulled to the side for security and it's never an issue. But he asks me like in that really official don't mess with me TSA voice, is there anything that could poke me in here? <laughs> And it was, you know, this. Yeah. Yeah. Stick your hand in there. It's a gauntlet of, you know, finger fillets. Vanilla socks, two at a time. This is the Jamboree colorway by Fiber for the People. I do believe there's a couple skeins of this left in the shop right now. I pulled one off the shelf because I loved it. And I'm really liking the way that it worked up. This was an experimental colorway that I had in the shop and I didn't have any idea how it would knit up. So I'm kind of excited to see how it knits up. So here is one of my socks. And I love it. I think it's a beautiful colorway. I love the flashes of red and purple in there. And then the, but my favorite part of this whole thing is this beautiful, which is, I'm calling it gunmetal. It hasn't been put in the shop yet. It will be this spring. It's um, gunmetal. A gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful gray color. 
Oh, so good. So, and I love the way it looks with the jamboree colorway. This is just a plain vanilla sock. Now I have a formula that I use for my vanilla socks. I don't go off of a pattern, but I, when I first started doing vanilla socks, I started with nitty.com um, and I did the Socks 101 kind of written tutorial by Kate Atherley. So if you're interested in developing your own vanilla sock formula for you, fit for your feet, definitely check this out. I'll link to it down below in the description box. It is nitty.com socks 101 and the author is Kate Atherley. And since, you know, when I use this, she's come out with another, um, and I think it was like a Toa. I, she came out with another installment in the socks 101 kind of series, if you will. So definitely check that out as well. But that is where I got kind of like my formula for my vanilla socks. So it's always just 72 stitches, uh, knit two, purl two in the round for 20 rows or rounds, excuse me. And then I knit a seven inch leg heel flap and gusset, but I actually think that I'm gonna be doing a um, fish lips kiss heel for this one. And then my foot for two inches. I, I always stop knitting the foot when it's two inches from the tip of my big toe. And then I decrease it down and then Kitchener it shut and there you go. So that is a pretty basic formula and it's really not very difficult to find your perfect fit formula. So definitely check that out. But that is what I have going on over here. The only thing is, is that the way this yarn knit up, when I split the ball into two different cakes, one cake is producing a sock leg with lots of this red flashing and the other one is producing with much less, almost more of the purple. So you can kind of see a variation, which is another reason why they always, you know, we, we always recommend that you alternate skeins when you're knitting with hand dyed yarn, especially something like this. But this, these are socks. I kind of expected them to have differences and that's okay with me. I'm not gonna alternate skeins of yarn when I'm knitting two socks at the same time with, you know, the same yarn. That's just too much, I can't. So those are my vanilla socks. I kind of like having them kicking around in my project bag. So I have, you know, I have one project bag that I know is going to have something super simple in it that I can just grab and go and work on. And then a project bag that has my next uh, work in progress, which is a little bit more complicated. Not anymore though, which we'll talk about in a second. Sock project bag, garment project bag, two separate projects for various different times. It's just kind of nice to have. So I'm really happy to have a pair of vanilla socks on the needles. Hopefully I will get these off the needles soon because I'd really like another pair of cozy knit socks to wear while the weather's still cold. All right, my next work in progress is my Truss Cardigan by Melissa Whirl. This is a design for Brooklyn Tweed. And you guys, if you've been watching the podcast, you know how much I've been ranting and raving about how little I liked the chart that went along with this pattern. And thank the, you know, gods, I am finished with that chart. It is history, I'm done, I can move on, and now it's just all kinds of stockinette stitch flat stockinette so I'm doing lots of purling but compared to that chart it's totally fine. Um, I'm kind of in the middle of a row right now which is you know how it goes so I'm gonna go ahead and purl across this really quick so I can show you guys this sweater that I'm working on right now. Yeah I don't know what it was about that chart. Well I don't know. I just felt like the chart was never intuitive. Sometimes you get, you know, textured charts or color work charts and they just become intuitive over time. You just kind of know what the chart's going to do. Or, you know, even if you don't know what it's going to do, if you look down, you can kind of grasp where you're going with it. I felt like because of this chart just being um, this truss shape, you know, just kind of essentially like just doing this with like a cable, you don't really ever have, it's not like a back and forth, it's just all one direction, constantly changing its angle. I don't know, so maybe that was why I just had so many issues with it and it just took me a long time. I had a few issues with it, but it just took me a long time. I mean, it wasn't the most fun to knit, but now that I'm beyond that, it's great because I'm just knitting and purling. Um, but yeah, this is the, truss cardigan. I'll go ahead and while I'm finishing this up, I'll pop a picture up here so you can see it right over here. That's the truss cardigan. I really like this because it's a boxy design. Um, there's something, and I don't really like cropped cardigans, but I like them when they're maybe like a little shorter than uh, your typical cardigan. And this is that for me. It kind of hits right at like that bony part. And it will, it's not really bony, but you know, that part where your hip bone is, it hits right there. Um, 
I think it's, you know, flattering or comfortable, just kind of cozy. And that boxy look is, seems to be kind of popular right now. Um, and I like that. And I, I like that I chose red for this, but sometimes I'm regretting that because I feel I would have liked it better in maybe a more neutral color. But I think if you play your cards right in the way that you dress, red can be a neutral color. I feel like it tends to go with so many different things. Okay, we are getting to the end here. Then I can show you guys. And I'm not, I don't even know why it's so important that I finish, you know, knitting all the way to the end of the row because I'm not going to be able to hold it all the way out. That it'll fall off the needles or it won't fit in the frame. That's like kind of the dilemma when you're trying to show off a knit sweater that's knit primarily in one piece is there's not enough room in the frame to show it all off. So here we go. Again, I can't like, I don't even know how I could you know, show this to you, but here is the truss design. It's really pretty. I'm looking at the screen through one of the eyelets right now. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's well worth the trouble to complete it. You know, so when I say that I didn't like knitting it or that it took me a long time, that's not me saying don't knit this pattern because it's, you know, it's a pain. That's more just like, it just takes time, it's gonna take work, but definitely the design is worth it. I think that it's such a unique placement for this kind of a textural design. Um, it's going to go like kind of around this way, so like that. So that's kind of where it'll go, it comes up to about here, and then pretty soon I'm going to start shaping for where I'm gonna add my sleeves. But yeah, that's, I don't know, it's just a really pretty place to have that element of the design right here, you know, on the hip and the waist. So I love that. So I definitely think it's worth the time that it takes to do it, um, but I am beyond it and I'm so excited. So this is how much I've done since I finished that truss motif. And I know it's not a ton. I've been, you know, uh, working on, you know, my socks, working on this, uh, doing some various different things for the shop. So I think that all my time has been kind of uh, spent doing other things as well and I think I just dropped a stitch here and fix that uh, but I'm super excited to just have this there waiting for me because I know it's easy now it's stock in that stitch it's not me having to have a chart on my lap and a highlighter and not talk to anybody because I, I won't know what's going on in the chart if I socialize with anybody that kind of situation that becomes tiresome when you have children and really like the only time you can work on something is if you're you know, in a closet with a flashlight. Yeah, so this is um, not almost done. Was about to even say, so this is almost done. I'll have this next podcast, which is not gonna happen. But this is moving along. I'm really, really happy to have this kind of moving along. And I think once I get to a point where it transitions to kind of like shaping for a different portion of the sweater, I'll really feel like I'm getting somewhere just because it'll feel more like a sweater and less like a strange lap blanket. But uh, yeah, love this. So this is the Trust Cardigan by Melissa Whirl for Brooklyn Tweed. <laughs> Okay guys, I want to take um, this time to do some project forecasting. Now, I know it's make nine season and everybody is forecasting the nine projects that they have on the docket for 2019. And if you've been paying attention on the Ravelry group, you may have seen that I posted something about make nine and I even posted nine projects that I was qualifying as my make nine projects. But since I did that, those projects have changed and it's only further confirming the fact that this whole make nine thing is just not for me. Um, I just have a hard time making a commitment to things like that when you're constantly seeing new designs coming through all the time and being inspired in different ways and having different things happen to you throughout the year that might change your inspiration and make you want to do different things. Who knows? I just find that trying to plan out you know, in January, what I'm going to knit for the entire year, um, or the nine things I want to accomplish in an entire year. To me, that just doesn't seem feasible. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've created a make nine in my queue. So I have nine items in my queue. And I had mentioned previously that I wasn't going to have any more than five, but you know, in the spirit of make nine, I decided I would allow myself to put nine items in my queue. And I'm also allowing those to change, not only to change, you know, the design, but also to change um, kind of their position in my queue as to what I'll knit next and after that and so on and so forth. 
So I've done that, um, but it has changed since the first time. I kind of updated it. It's just something that I think requires a lot of thought and the more that you think about it, the more you feel like you need to change the choices because there's something about putting it in a grid that makes you feel like you're stuck to it and you know, you wanna make sure it's done right, which, and I guess that's just part of Make Nine that makes me kind of not like it so much. So anyway, they're there, they're in my queue. I am gonna work from that, but if I find that I wanna do something more than something else or I wanna switch something out, that's just gonna happen for me, what can I say? But when I do decide to knit something, I want to see it through and that's a really big goal for me is to number one, and this is kind of, New Year's resolutions are, you know, iffy for me as well. I feel like I always make some kind of a resolution in my mind for how I wanna carry on in the coming year. But you know, I was watching the Grocery Girls and Tracy said something about New Year's resolutions and she doesn't have any New Year's resolutions or she doesn't make New Year's resolutions because every day is a day to resolve to do something. And I think that that's such a really great point that we should live as if every day is a new day, you know, to resolve to do something and not just that you have to start at the beginning of the year or that you have to start on Monday or whatever. So I feel like I'm digressing with that. But what I I'm saying is that I did set aside nine in the spirit of make nine and um, I put the first one in the first position because that was something I really did want to work on and we'll see where it goes from there. So anyway I'm gonna go ahead and forecast just the next cast on, the next serious cast on that I want to do and I'm kind of excluding the year of hats from this because I'll be jumping in and out of that knit along as I can um, but I'm not gonna you know, consider that as part of my like make nine queue and those designs that I knit for the year of hats may or may not show up in my queue, whatever, I'll just kind of allow myself that. Um, but what I do have in my queue and I'm looking at it right over here so I can remember like the names of everything. I was looking for a shawl and I feel like I've said this before that I'm just not a shawl wearer, but this winter, <laughs> or this like fall and this winter, I've been wanting to wear a shawl. I've been wanting something that I can just throw around my neck that's cozy and warm. Not a scarf and not um, a cowl, but just a nice shawl that has kind of dangly parts. <laughs> I don't know, that was just something that really interested me. And so I wanted to find something like that. I kind of bounced between a few different designs, but I finally settled on, I believe it's a new release. It's called A Girl's Best Friend and it's by Isabel Kramer. This particular one, A Girl's Best Friend, is really beautiful. Um, just a classic knit shawl. I'll go ahead and pop it up over here. You can see it. The colors that she chose are gorgeous. Um, it's just really pretty all around and I love the little pom-pom tassel details on there. Kind of that perfect little dangly something I was looking for. So this is going to be my next cast on and I'm excited about it. I have no idea when I'm going to finish it. Um, I would like to have it finished by January 1st. That's what I put in my queue and that's going to be my goal. Maybe I can finish it earlier. Um, who knows, but I do want to cast on to this. I'll be using Fiber for the People yarn and I think I want to develop, I'm, I'm kind of in the works of developing a few new spring pastels for the shop and so I might be using this as an opportunity to uh, try out some of those colors. But this is definitely the first design in my queue that I would like to cast on and there are others in there and I will probably be casting on to more than just this um, maybe casting on to some smaller projects I have a couple pairs of socks in there I have the skiff hat which is a Brooklyn tweed pattern um, a couple of other things and then I may you know decide I want to try my hand at designing something who knows? I just created a queue, nine items. We'll see what we can do with that. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about the Make Nine and what you're planning on doing for Make Nine or how you feel about the whole thing. Definitely head over to Ravelry if you'd like to join in that conversation or feel free to do it right down below in the comment section. Um, but yeah, so that is what I plan on casting on next for my Make Nine challenge. <laughs> Okay, as many of you who've been watching the podcast know, I host a little thing here called the Local Yarn Store Call to Action. This is where I ask you, the viewer, to go out into your community, into your local yarn shops, your quilt shops, any kind of a craft shop, any place out there that revolves around making that you are a part of, to get some footage, to send it to me here at the podcast so that I can patch it together and share it here to further broaden our perspective of these making communities in our area. I love getting these submissions 
submissions from you guys. It's really cool kind of getting a glimpse into these places in parts of the country and parts of the world. It's very inspiring. So keep them coming. They're very cool. This episode, I want to share with you guys a place called the Smoky Mountain Spinnery, which is in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. This was submitted by Nola, who is at Memory Bears and More on Instagram. Thank you, Nola. Nola mentions that this place is, has some of the best selections of weaving and rug hooking materials that she's found. And she says it's the only place that she's able to find collage square needles, which is really, really cool. I can never find those either. So without further ado, here is Smoky Mountain Spinnery in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. All right, you guys, that's all the time I have for this evening. Thank you so much for joining me again for this episode 37 of the podcast. It means so much to know that you guys are here, enjoying this, enjoying all the things that are being uploaded to the channel. I appreciate it so much. Keep on coming back. There's lots of fun things coming to the channel in 2019 that I'm really excited about. In the meantime, and in between podcast episodes, head over to Ravelry, get involved in the group over there. I will update you guys on little things in between episodes if I need to over there. Um, of course, always participating in the chatter threads, seeing the fun things that you guys are working up. The next episode will come out the middle of February, so keep an eye out for that as well. And in between now and the next episode, also keep your eyes out for the next yarn dyeing vlog series surrounding the first colorway in the Bird in a Hand Sock Set Club for Fiber for the People. So that is coming down your way as well, so keep an eye out for that. Anyway, until the next time I see you guys, happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing, happy new year 2019. I will see you guys again soon. Bye.